welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 260. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And this is a podcast about primarily knitting and some sewing and pretty much making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And yes, last week was a bonus episode. It wasn't our normal format. Uh, I had a very special guest on the podcast, Ellie of the Skander Knits podcast, and it seems like a lot of you really enjoy that that episode. So yay! Uh, thank you so much for watching, and big thanks to Ellie for coming on the podcast. We had such a great time. Uh, it was really awesome getting to host her while she was here for Vogue Knitting Live. Um, so if you ha missed that episode, definitely go check it out and check out Ellie's podcast because she is the queen of color work design, if I had to describe her in a nutshell. Vogue Knitting Live was there are no words, you guys. It was, as always, like every year, it was just, it, it was incredible. Um, just getting to see my friends that I don't normally get to see as often and meeting friends that I only know through other podcasts. And uh, yeah, it was just, to as I always say about these things, it's a whirlwind and it, I'm always left just feeling, <sighs> yeah, I, I don't, I, speechless basically, but um it was a really great time, and I have to say, this was one of the most enjoyable years at Vogue Knitting Live. It wasn't crazy as like it was the previous year. Uh, normally, it's just jam-packed, and there's nowhere to move, to breathe, and it just doesn't really make for a very enjoyable shopping experience. Uh, but this year, it was a little more tame, and a lot more wiggle room to get into booths, and uh, yeah, just, yeah, it was, it was a really great time. So as I mentioned, uh, check out the last bonus episode that I co-hosted with Ellie, we share our Vogue Knitting Live hauls, and you know, we, we were a little naughty when it came to, uh, you know, purchases, but uh, you know, it, it was just it's so worth it, and uh, I cannot wait to work with all that gorgeous yarn that I came away with. Uh, but I do have some other stuff to share with you this week. Uh, I have made progress on some projects that I've been working on, and I have some, I don't have any sewing to share with you, but I do have some sewing topics to discuss, and uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to chat about with you. Yes, before I forget, I knew, I, I did not write it down on my show notes, but as I was setting up, I was like, I can't forget to talk about this. But uh, as I mentioned, I am going once again to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Super excited. Uh, it's coming up in March, so it's right around the corner. But the exciting news is that uh, the Yarngasm podcast uh, has been invited to partake in the podcast lounge hosted by Blacker Yarn. So I was so excited to find that out. So thank you so much, Micah and Joe, for the invite. Uh, and you know, I, I really look forward to meeting uh, those of you who will be there. Uh, I'm planning to go to the, the marketplace on Friday and Saturday. Uh, so if you do see me, please come up and say hello. Uh, it would be lovely to meet you. Uh, I will not be vending there. It's just gonna be me, not Bull and Vine Yarns. I, I will just be there as myself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Very exciting news and completely honored to be a part of that. And again, just can't wait to meet you guys. So anyway, uh, that is pretty much it for announcements uh, this week. And yeah, I guess I'm just I'm just gonna go right into what I have on my needles uh, this week. So, living in my wino bag <laughs> is my Zweig uh, pullover by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Boyland Knits. But here is my Zweig uh, pullover, and here's where I am with it. And I'm making quite a bit of progress, you guys. So I don't know if you can see this little. Sucre Sucre Miniature Cheese Progress Keeper on here, but that's where I was on Saturday, and that's how much I knit from it. So, yeah, I did not have a life <laughs> over the weekend. I just knit and knit and knit and knit wholeheartedly on this, uh, and I got very far. So I knit on a little bit last night, but uh, I cannot wait to bind this off, you guys. This is gonna be one of my favorite sweaters that I've ever made. Um, yeah, it's, I just, I'm biased by saying that I love the colors, but you know, it's my hand dyed yarn, uh, Woolen Vine yarns in the Woolen Vine number no. nine colorway, this glorious shade of mauve right here, and uh, Solstice, which is just a very lovely neutral, uh, beige, I don't, I, want, I don't wanna call it beige, but like a, a 
taupe, like a very subtle taupe with um, black and brown flecks in it. Just a very lovely neutral. But yeah, I finished all the lace and the color work charts and now I'm on to the body. And I thought, um, I was, I totally didn't realize that there was some kind of uh, cable texture pattern to the body. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's just a very simple, it creates like a little, they're little X marks, or X marks, but they look like little cabled X's. And really, it just adds like a whole another level of um, interest to this pattern, uh, I, I have to say. And it seems like a lot is going on, but it all just kind of welds together really well. And I like the way it looks. Um, and I thought that while I was knitting it, like, oh, I have, to knit, I have to knit all these little cables. It's going to totally slow me down. Not the case at all. It's just really simple um, one by, like, twisted stitches, uh, you know, mini cables, if you will. So it's, it adds like a nice kind of break in between miles and miles of stockinette. So I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Uh, and I'm also knitting uh, with, with singles. So this is my nouveau base. It's 100% uh, superwash merino single ply yarn. And I'm using my Luka uh, needles, US size five, 3.75 millimeter needles and I have to say I know a lot of people um not a lot but you know some people may or may not enjoy knitting with singles but I have to say like single ply on wood it's like butter it just it just glides over the needle so well and I think because even with um you know even though I'm using Lika needles uh, I love the points on these they're very they're not too pointy but they have a nice point where they don't like split the the yarn or anything um but even with clover needles I think I remember casting this on using clover needles um and it was just it just glided it was really enjoyable to knit with so if you're on the fence about knitting with single ply yarn or you just have reservations about knitting with uh, single ply yarn and you haven't tried using wooden needles I would give it a shot because um, I know knitting single ply on metal needles can be a little sticky if that makes any sense so um, yeah anyway but <sighs> you guys I'm already considering knitting a second one I just have to find the right colorway combination I definitely want to knit one that's more like gray or black that goes with a lot more um but this you guys oh, so I love this pattern so much anyway uh, I could wax poetic but yeah anyway and uh oh yes and I another thing that I want to mention I am also alternating skein uh, alternating skeins as I knit this in the round so uh there's actually a really interesting technique to do this uh it's I can't, it would take me a while to explain it, but it's really simple uh, to create a seamless join when alternating skeins uh, because the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm using hand dyed yarn and I want to avoid any pooling uh, and flashing if that makes any sense. Or um, if there's a difference in dye lot between two skeins, it, it alternating between the two has a really nice, it blends the two together nicely and you, it, it's not obvious. So um, yeah. That is where I am with Zweig. Zweig. Oh, guys. I love it. Next up, uh, I told you guys this is going to be the year of the garment. I am on a total sweater kick uh, because I don't, I definitely don't have enough sweaters in my wardrobe. And the ones that I do don't necessarily fit quite right. Uh, they, I definitely have to work on my sizing and, um, you know, paying attention more to gauge when I knit sweaters and I'm getting the hang of it, you guys. So, you know, watch this space. But anyway, I cast on a Threep Muir by Isolde Teague. And here is where I am with that. So it kind of, you know, I am kind of knitting both sweaters concurrently. So I'll knit on one and then we'll knit on the other. But I finished the yokes um, both over the weekend. So <laughs> here's where I am with my Threep Muir. And I totally, again, like these are all colors that I normally wouldn't, well, you know, the, the mauve obviously, you know, is me, but normally I gravitate towards more muted colors, darker colors. I wear a lot of black, uh, but here's where I am with this one. So I finished the yoke and now I'm in a sea of stockinette in the round. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I, th this is just one giant body sock at this point. Uh, so I think I have about five more inches of body to knit than ribbing. And then I get to, hop onto Sleeve Island for a while. So that should be fun. Uh, and I'm using, the yarn that I'm using is Jameson and Smith in their two ply jumper weight uh, yarn. And I don't know the colors offhand because 
they are numbers they aren't proper names <laughs> so they if you're familiar with these yarns jameson and smith jameson spindrift they most like shetland um like shetland yarn companies don't assign their colorways names they assign them numbers like r2d2 or through CPO, I don't know. So yeah, as with any Isolde Teague pattern, if, if you are familiar with her pattern, she definitely likes to throw in her own uh, little technique. Like she loves throwing in all these little random uh, techniques that uh, are so genius and seem really hard at first. Like, oh, what is she trying to do here? Why was she trying to do that? But it, at, after you execute them, it makes so much sense, uh, especially with the yoke here. And you would think that uh, you would just carry your floats or catch your floats behind these. But anyway, I don't know if you can see this. She uses um, a purling technique uh, to catch the floats where the two um, white knit stitches are just r relatively, uh, are pretty far apart from each other. So even if you could, you could essentially catch it the classic way, but I think this is pretty genius because it just kind of, um, you can see that knit, that strip of knit stitch right there. Those on the right side, uh, she has you purl the stitches so they kind of like tuck into, in between the the green knit stitches. So it, it's kind of genius, like it, it's like a disappearing trick, so to speak, I guess. So anyway, really clever, really enjoy, I really enjoy knitting on this. Oh, I'm still enjoying knitting on it, but it's all in the yoke, you guys. I mean, that's where the fun is. And then it's just like, ah, you're, you, you get to check out and just knit plain stockinette and binge watch your favorite TV. So otherwise, I think that is it. You know, just some short row shaping on the back. Um, and then after you're done with the yoke, she has you do more short row shaping. So yeah, it's heavily designed <laughs> and uh, as simple as it looks. Oh yeah, and there's also some raglan. I don't know if you can see. There are some raglan. Uh, uh, increases there as well to add some more shaping. So, you know, gotta love those technical details. But otherwise, just really simple and fun to knit. Um, and I'm all about the color work these days, you guys. I'm telling you, telling you. So as I told myself, as my reward for finishing the yoke on this sweater, uh, and I just so happened to finish the yoke on the other one, I'm gonna allow myself to cast something on. Something reckless. Uh, something that I saw, um, I, if you guys follow Renee Callahan of East London Knit, she has the East London Knits podcast as well, and she she's just awesome. I love her podcast. It's so relaxing, and she's so talented. She's a designer as well, and interviews a lot of other fiber people in the community, and yeah, she just has a really great podcast. And when she talked about her latest knitwear collection, especially her Joe shawl that she just came out with, I just, my jaw dropped. I'm like, I have to cast that on as soon as she publishes it. So um, as soon as I got wind that it was available on Ravelry, I just like pounced on it and, um, you know, got my yarn, picked out, picked out my yarn and, you know, I cast on. The whole idea behind her recollection collection uh, is actually, that rhymes. <laughs> anyway, but the whole inspiration behind that collection, uh, as she said, is to knit from stash and using yarn that has a special memory attached to it or souvenir yarn. And I really love that concept. Uh, I thought it was brilliant. And here is what I have so far. And yeah, you got this is all um, from my stash. Either the yarn what has been languishing in my stash or they've been gifted to me. Um, so yeah, lots of special memories attached to this yarn. So this dark yarn right here, I got in a uh, D stash actually. And there's like 500 yards. Some It was perfect. It was just meant to be in the shawl because, well, this is creatively dyed yarn. Uh, it's 100% superwash merino, uh, 510 yards in here, which is perfect for the shawl, um, which is 466 meters. And yeah, it's here's the label. So yeah, that's the label. And yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I had invited friends over for a knit night when Dennis and I had first moved into this house. I just told my friends to bring over any yarn that they don't want anymore. We'll do a white elephant swap. Um, so we had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, this is some yarn that just brings back memories from that. This was sent to me by Magdalena of the Wolf and Shafa podcast. Uh, we did a holiday swap and she surprised me with some onion yarn. Uh, onion, it's called Onion Knit and it's, Net, uh, nettle, nettle, uh, however you want to pronounce it, it's nettle sock yarn, which is really interesting. Uh, and it's sock yarn in nature fibers. So it's 70% wool plus three, uh, 30% nettle fibers. And yeah, the color is 1028. 
It's really beautiful. So thank you so much, Magdalena. Um, and it's surprising when you hear nettle fibers, you think it's kind of scratchy, but this is pretty soft and it has a really lovely halo to it. I saw a couple of other podcasters talking about this yarn, so I'm really excited to be uh, using it and trying it out for myself. So there's that colorway. And then this colorway, I did quite a lot of holiday swaps this year, guys. Uh, so this is another skein of yarn that I received from a holiday swap that I did with Hannah of the Corner of Craft or the Crafty Chat podcast. And yeah, girl's got my number. <laughs> Can never have too much more of you guys. Um, and it looks very similar to the onion yarn, but it's not onion. It is Anna and Clara wool blend. So it's 75% wool and 25% acrylic. And I really, really love the label. It looks Victorian and just vintagey and beautiful. So yeah, I am currently, uh, Renee has you do kind of like a fade with the, um, with the different colors as you progress with them. So, you know, you knit for a while, as long as you, I love how customizable this pattern is. So you knit for however you want with the first color and then you blend it in with um, the next color by fading it in every, alternating between two colorways every other row for a couple of rows, um, for a couple of repeats, I should say. Um, and then you continue knitting for however many rows you want with the next color. And then you can add as many colors as you want. Um, so the next color I'm going to add in is this yarn, Eden, uh, Eden Cottage Yarns that I purchased at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Again, knitting from stash. Um, so that's gonna be the lightest point on here. And I don't know, I'll see what other colorways pop, pop up and maybe I'll incorporate those as well. But um, yeah, I just, I'm enjoying it, you guys. I really am. It's a nice break from the sweaters occasionally. So as I mentioned, uh, this is from, this pattern is from the Recollection Collection by Renee Callahan. And uh, Renee has generously offered a giveaway for the collection. So if you would like to win the collection, she has a whole bunch of beautiful patterns, uh, definitely go check it out. Uh, but yes, if you would like to enter to win a giveaway of this collection, uh, hop on over to the Yarngasm Ravelry group uh, where I will post a thread and just tell us about a project that you have knit uh, that holds a very special memory. I'm, I'm curious, let us know, because I love hearing stories like that. So thank you so much again to Renee for the generous uh, giveaway prize. And yeah, definitely hop on over to her uh, pattern page and check it out. Uh, so anyway, I think that is it for works in progress. No finished objects this week. Uh, as far as, let me see. Oh yes, stash enhancement is concerned. I do have some stash that I did not share on the Vogue Knitting Live um, bonus episode. I didn't include it in the haul that I showed off. Uh, but there was an event uh, when Ellie from Skander Knits came into town. Uh, we agreed to meet up at the Mayak event. Uh, it was in the West Village and Michelle Wong was doing a book signing for her new capsule collection, which is very exciting. And I haven't seen Michelle in so long. Uh, I believe it was Michelle Wong. She's the amazing and talented designer behind a lot of Brooklyn Tweed patterns. And she's like the queen of cable, cable patterns. She's, she's, She's awesome. So anyway, she was back in town and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to you know, catch up with her, say hello, uh, and meet up with Ellie. And yeah, it was just a really fun event. Uh, Emily, my new uh, employee came, with, came along with and we had a really great time. So, uh, but yes, it was, I've never knit with Mayak, but they had all the samples there. And just after feeling them, I was like, you can't go to these things and come home empty handed. Um, so I came away with some Mayak yarn and <laughs> here's what I got. So yeah, this is my uh, Mayak Tibetan fibers and it's their naturally soft base. So the really great thing about this yarn is that it's 100% traceable. Uh, they purchased their wools directly from nomadic Tibetan herds and yeah, completely ethically sourced and just, oh, just so lovely to work, um, to, to squish and feel and it's 100% baby yak what could be better. So this is another uh, mustard colorway. And you guys, I might love mauve with all my heart, but this is my other, my other favorite color. Like any kind of mustard or olive green, it's just my other, my other fave. Uh, and yeah, so appropriately called, it's appropriately called mustard. Um, it's 50, each skein is 50 grams and you get 380 yards or um, 350 meters per skein. So of course I had to get two skeins uh, just to make a shawl, like a nice lacy shawl. Um, 
and yeah, this is lace weight, which I don't have too much of in my stash. And it's rare that I actually knit with lace, but this, I just squishing it, I could not resist. So I came away with two. Um, yeah, and it was just a really fun night and, you know, definitely some awesome memory yarn to have in my stash for a little bit until I figure out what I want to make with it. And then, I don't know if you were watching the, uh, the bonus episode with Ellie where I talk about how I wanted some very simple, uh, delicate stitch markers for my knitting for certain projects because I like, I like my projects to be photogenic and, you know, while I do find the colorful stitch markers useful, I just kind of wanted something a little bit delicate and dainty for, for my uh, knitting. So I was on a quest for some basic, simple uh, copper jump ring stitch markers and I found, I did not see any, believe it or not, I did not see any at Vogue Knitting Live. I saw a lot of those light bulb stitch markers, but I was just really on a quest for simple circular um, stitch markers. And I found these on uh, Stunning Stitch, uh, stunning stitch markers, I believe it's called. Yeah, I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, stunning stitch markers uh, on Etsy, and they come in this really adorable case. And yeah, it just slides open, and you get these really cute. Um, they're gonna ah, fall out. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, right? Um, but yeah, they're just these very simple, basic copper stitch markers. I don't know if you can see that focus. And they did come in silver, and they also came in gold uh, and gunmetal. So very happy about those. Uh, and I also, while at Vogue Knitting Live, we were hanging out on the mezzanine, a group of us were hanging out knitting, and Julie of Sweet Sparrow uh, Knits was knitting on a project and she had these really hilarious stitch markers of cat faces on her project. And I, she mentioned who the maker was, but you know, obviously after a long day, I just totally forgot and didn't think about it until I stumbled on um, I was browsing Etsy and found those these stitch markers, the copper ones, and then it just so happened that that was the same shop where I where Julie got her um, her cat stitch markers. So they come in a little pouch like this. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, they're all like <laughs> they come in the light bulb stitch markers, but um, they're just like cat faces, and they are so funny and. But I think the really hilarious thing about them is that they have kind of grumpy faces. They all look like, why? Why am I hanging off this project? So, yeah. And these are, what I mean by light bulb stitch markers is that they, it's kind of like a safety pin, but they have like kind of a light bulb shape to them. So that's why we call them light bulb stitch markers. Um, be cool if they lit up. They, unfortunately, they did not have any black cats. So, um, but you know, I, I'm... I love all kinds of cats, so we'll very happily have multicolored cats on my project at any time. So yeah, that's my little <laughs> sash enhancement segment. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been very good. I'm going to hold out until Edinburgh to do any more. Well, mm -hmm. um, I, I will have something to show you next time I record uh, because I, I did I did do a purchase from the Wooly Thistle again. Um, but yeah, more on that next week. Uh, so anyway, but yes, other than that, I'm going to be very good until Edinburgh because yeah, so that is it uh, for stash enhancements, whips and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna move along to sewing. I don't have very much to share with you as far as finished garments. I'm hoping to get some sewing done today actually um, because I have some, uh, I, I have fabric for another lady skater dress, which is what I'm wearing right now. This is my, Bat-tastic, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of like twill floral designs and then you have like these little cheerful bats flopping around. I love this dress so much. Um, and I have another one in kind of like a mauve shade. I kind of copycatted Tommy from Scroll Pie Productions podcast. <laughs> she uh, made an Agnes top out of it. It's the same fabric, but in just kind of like a mauve pink color. But I, my very first lady skater dress was out of that fabric and there are kind of some hitches and glitches with it. I still wear it, but uh, this is my favorite version of it. So this one gets quite a lot of wear. Yeah, I'm hoping to <laughs> do like a little assembly line. I have two types of fabric that I want to make another one out of. So we'll see if I can make it happen, but um, I want to make two more of these this weekend. So anyway, that and a birthday dress, which is coming up. But anyway, um, yeah, that's all. I don't have any finished garments to show you, but I did purchase some uh, some patterns because McCall's, Butterick, and Vogue were having 
a sale on their website like they do and you know you can't resist sometimes um so i picked up these three patterns and here's one by mccall's and i love there's something about these necklines that i really love it's a little formal for me but i think if i choose the right fabric i could kind of dress it down um and this is mccall's let me see mccall's 7534 and yeah i think it would make i would make the sleeveless version this well yeah like this version up here so uh but yeah it's really pretty so i got that one and then this one is a little i'm a little surprised uh that i chose this one but i have fabric that i really want to make out of this and i think no, the here i'll just show it to you but yeah this is a vogue pattern and i've never sewn a vogue pattern before but this one caught my eye because i do have um some really beautiful dark gray black flannel <laughs> i know flannel right i you know i will be honest i've never sewn I have sewn with flannel before, but not a full dress. And I don't know if it's the right type of fabric for a dress, but it wants it wants to be that. So, and I love the long sleeves on it. And yeah, the, this V, has, I don't know if you can see that. This version too, I really like. So um, yeah, I have the pattern pieces all cut out. I just have to cut the fabric out. But the thing I really love about this pattern, number one, it has all of my measurements. I don't have to do any altering, <laughs> which is, always a plus uh so yeah it's vogue easy options so they give you a lot of different sizing options like a they have like an a cup through d cup so the fact that they have an a cup in there bonus um so yeah a cup 32 bust and 26 inch waist i'm gold hopefully i don't know we'll see but anyway um i definitely want this dress this is gonna be awesome there's that one and then this one just right up my alley another vogue pattern um just for a simple jersey jersey knit dress i'm gonna move along to shop update because i am having a shop update tomorrow friday january 26th at 7 p.m eastern time uh however i just want to give you guys a heads up uh next week is my birthday so i do plan on uh giving myself a little bit of a knitcation uh so to speak so my birthday's on january 31st on a wednesday so i'm just taking wednesday through uh, Friday off so there will be no shop update that week uh, the next shop update after that will be on um, Friday February 9th again at 7 p.m. Eastern time so just a heads up uh, I'll re I'm sure I'll remind you guys next time but um, in case you were curious I will be taking a much needed break by popular demand I will have some more Gashley crumb so here it is on footsie here it is on blitzed I will also have some more, I will be dyeing fig bash today, so there will be that in the shop, I just don't have it to show you uh, today, but anyway, um, I will also have, because it is my birthday month, I am dyeing goth day cake <laughs> all January long, so here it is on Smitten DK, and here it is on Footsie, uh, also by popular demand, I will have some Feyre from my Quartz of Thorns and Roses <laughs> obsession. Uh, I dyed a Thera colorway, and then, of course, I will have some Resand. So, there is that. Uh, yes, so, and by the way, uh, the Inner Circle Yarn Club has come to a close, so thank you so much to everybody who uh, partook in that. Yeah, I'm thinking about having a, another yarn club for it, but I am going to take a little break from the yarn clubs uh, just to kind of space things out a little bit. Um, but I am hoping to roll out some of the Twin Steaks colorways uh, in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, hopefully I will announce a new yarn club soon because I know a lot of you wanted to partake in the Inner Circle Yarn Club but missed the boat. Uh, so I will I will do my best. I, the next one will definitely be another Inner Circle Yarn Club Volume 2. So um, yeah, again, stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, very exciting stuff. I will also have some more uh, mystery mauve skeins in the shop because I know a lot of you uh, a lot of you love the mystery skeins, which makes me so happy because sometimes I go on like these little dye binges where I'm trying to come up with a new colorway and um, while they are cool, it's just like not what I am I was going for, but at, nevertheless, they are still great skeins of yarn to work with. So seems like a lot of you like that. So I will have some more of those skeins in the shop this week along with some other non-move <laughs> mystery skeins because I did have a little fun in the dye pots this week because I am working on a project that I can't talk too much about yet so but anyway these are kind of the byproducts from 
uh, said project. But yeah, those are mainly on my Nouveau base, so also keep a look out for those. But uh, anyway, that is it for shop update. I hope you can make it. Again, it is Friday, January 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern time over on my online shop, www.volunvineyarns.com. And as always, uh, if you would like to keep in the loop about uh, shop news, uh, what colorways you're going to be in in each update, definitely sign up for my newsletter, which you can do by going to my website and scrolling all the way down to the bottom and entering your uh, email address. And yeah, I will, I do my best every week to send out uh, an email letting you know what's happening. Okay, that said, I'm gonna move along to Blather, where I chat about what's been going on in my life. Should you care to stick around? So not too much has been going on uh, since Vogue Knitting Live. I've, I've come down from my VKL high, so <laughs> that's good. Um, as I mentioned, those things always take as much fun as I have at those things and getting to hang out with my friends and chatting and meeting new people. I love that stuff, but the next day I always feel so run down and so exhausted. Um, and because of my introversion, it just kind of, it really, it takes a lot out. So that following weekend, I just, I did absolutely nothing. I just sat and knit, which is probably why I got so much work done on both of my, my pullovers that I'm knitting. Uh, yeah, it was just so wonderful just to sit down, binge watch some podcasts and recharge my batteries. Um, I'm trying to think what else we did. Dennis and I went out to eat together. I uh, tried a new sushi place in our neighborhood. Um, yeah, just it was a really nice relaxing weekend. Speaking of introversion, while we're on the topic, I know I talk about this so much because yeah, in, I, I will say the struggle can be real, you guys. It's just, <sighs> yeah. But anyway, it's, it is it is what it is. And uh, my, uh, Emily, who has been coming over to help me once a week packaging yarns, Emily, you're awesome. Um, she suggested that I check out this book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. And this book has been on my to read list for I can't, I, for a really long time. And uh, my friend Tanya actually told me about it as well. And I've just never gotten around to listening to, or, you know, downloading the audiobook and giving it a listen. Uh, well, I finally did. And oh my gosh, you guys, it is awesome. Even if you're not an introvert, it's just so insightful, so packed of interesting, like, facts and um it, it is very it, it can be kind of dense but it's very well written and you know where it's informative and you know just kind of like reaffirms what it is to be an introvert <laughs> so um i'm finding it really fascinating and highly recommend you check it out um yeah but in, when i'm not reading that sometimes i like to switch between you know i like to switch to lighter reading occasionally when listening to that type of stuff um so i've also, I just downloaded Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I just started listening to it yesterday while working, and I think I'm about like an hour to two hours in, and so far so good. I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, and it's it takes place in I believe it's a young it's a young adult novel. It takes place in Victorian Victorian London, England, and so far I really I don't really know what's going on, but it, there's a lot of magic happening, um, a lot of shape shifting happening, um, and the characters are just being developed and just to tell you like off the bat like this girl comes over on a boat from America to meet up with her brother uh and she's met by these two uh sisters um who say her brother couldn't you know gave her a letter from her brother saying that her brother was sorry he couldn't meet up but trust these ladies they're awesome they will take you in and take care of you uh, until I can join you so uh yeah she trusts these ladies and turns out it, 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 they throw her for a loop. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there in case you're curious, but yeah, they, um, they take her in and things aren't so peachy after that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it, it gets, it's getting really interesting. Um, I'm curious to see where it goes and yeah, it, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm really enjoying that genre. So that is what I'm reading. Uh, and you know, by the way, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I've been receiving a quite a few emails and messages from viewers letting me know uh, book suggestions that they think I will like and there are just so many so thank you. Uh, I definitely have a running list of books that I want to check out. Um, I have to say I'm very I, very picky when it comes to my reading. Uh, it just I have to go with what I feel like reading or what I'm drawn to so I definitely write them all down and uh, I'm you know the ones that I'm interested in and you know thank you so much. Um, a lot of great suggestions in there and I'm trying to think yes 
that is pretty much it for this week, you guys. Uh, we have some friends coming over uh, tomorrow to stay with us. Uh, they're gonna be in town, so they're gonna crash here. And uh, then we're gonna do brunch with them the next day. So, and the rest, I think, yeah, I think it's just gonna be another nice quiet weekend, which I'm all for. So anyway, I will leave it there. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye.